I want to show you another way to combine the images that we were just working with um, into a document just like we did in the previous video but this way I want to show you how you don't have to bring them all in or the entire image into um, the new document you can just kind of brush or paint them in as you need them and so we're still gonna make a collage and our ultimate goal is to make some sort of postcard and I think that this video I'm gonna go through the entire thing until I have the entire postcard done uh, we'll make a collage we'll add some text in front of it and then uh, maybe we'll add some layer effects to it and the only difference between this document or uh, this example and the previous one is uh, well there's not much different so I have the same document I just deleted the layers that we were already working with and I have the same images that are in the other document. Um, I just am going to open a few more. And so I have a few more here that I've added because I realized that uh, when we go to make the collage, we're probably not going to have uh, enough to fill up the five by seven. And so I just want to have more at my, my disposal. Now the other images, I've already opened them, I've already converted them to 300 resolution, but these new ones, I need to make sure I do those. And so starting with the first one, um, before I get started, I'll just choose image and image size and just kind of make sure that we're comparing apples to apples here. And so since our finished document is 300 resolution, I'm going to change the resolution of all of these documents to also be 300 resolution. And as I'm doing that, I am going to, uh, well, I can't do two things at once, so I'm going to finish. I was going to say that I was going to start explaining what the clone stamp tool is, but I'm not because I'm almost done now. Okay, that was the last one. And so in our first example, I showed you that you could make a selection and you could copy or you could do the whole thing um, and you could paste content from one document to another. And so I copied it. It has a feathered edge because my selection has a feathered edge up here. And when you paste it, you can paste it and you can kind of make a collage. Um, but that kind of requires you to be able to look at this image and know exactly the part of the image that you want to use and, and you have to grab it exactly right when you're copying and pasting it. Um, there is a tool on your tools panel. It is called the clone stamp tool. Let me change, change this. Uh, it's called the clone stamp tool. It looks like a rubber stamp if you look at it in profile. And if you push and hold on it, you have the clone stamp tool and the pattern stamp tool. We're going to specifically use the clone stamp tool right now. And if you look at it, you can kind of see that you have a brush. You can make the brush bigger or smaller, uh, just like you would any other brush. And so I'm doing this with the right and left bracket keys. But you could come up to the top of your screen and you could make the brush bigger or smaller that way as well. You can also have hardness or no hardness to it. And so if you have no hardness, you can see that if I was to start, you can see those those flowers in there, which doesn't make sense right now, but I'll explain in a second. But you can see that if you, if you were to paint this, it has a hard edge to it, no matter what you paint. Um, so that's why I like to make the hardness zero, so it's a really soft brush. But you don't have to go with just kind of a circle brush. You could choose any brush that's available to you on the the brushes drop down here and so you can see here that I have this weird textured brush and so as I paint it's going to start painting in the image that I'm copying but it's going to paint it with that texture and so I'm going to step backwards to get rid of that the image that you're seeing it's being copied from what's called a source or a target and so the target is set on an image that has flowers, but you can set that target yourself. So I'm going to switch back just to a circle brush for now uh, that has a hardness of zero. And so I do not have to paint the flowers. I don't have to paint that image in. I could say I want to copy the bicycle image, and you have to set a target. You have to say start copying from some location. If you press the Option or the Alt key, your cursor, instead of being a paintbrush, will change into crosshairs. And when it's crosshairs, you can click and wherever you click is where you will start copying from and that is called your target and so for this example I want to start copying let's zoom out a little bit I want to start copying from down here where the bicycle uh, pedals are and if I hold the option or the alt key depending on if you're on a Mac or a PC and you click that starting point notice how right now my brush is showing you flowers if I click so I, I'm pushing the option key down and I click the, the wheel, or not the wheel, the pedals. Now when I look in my little cursor, if I make it bigger, you can see that it's going to start making a copy 
of the image and it's going to copy from that location. And we don't want to copy it in this document, but what we want to do is we want to go back to our postcard that we're making, our collage postcard. You can make your brush bigger, smaller. I would kind of go with a medium sized brush. And then you can start painting on a new layer. Let's call this bikes. And now you can just click and you can start painting and you're painting and you're copying the image from one document to the next. And so what I'd recommend is create a new layer for whatever you're copying and then don't feel like you have to paint the whole thing in in one swoop because see how I went too far and now I have the hard edge at the top of the picture from the original image. Um, you can start and you can kind of just slowly kind of add in the painting until you get the part that you want and then you can keep adding and then if you go up too far because you did smaller brush strokes, if you hit undo, you're not undoing everything that you just did. And if you hover, you can kind of see what you're going to be adding. And so maybe you want to make sure, see I went too far on that one, you want to make sure that it goes kind of, kind of up high enough that you get all of the bikes that you want to see and not too far that you get a hard edge on the sides of your document. And once you have that, you don't have to leave it here. You can move it around. You can kind of tuck it up in the corner if you need to or position it over on the right hand side. What I'm going to do is I am going to um, create a new layer and say that the bikes are the only thing that's going to go on the bikes layer. And so now I'm done with the bikes so I can close out of that document and now I can go to the next one which is the C. And so maybe I want to paint from maybe the middle of the little, I think this is channel? A canal. It's a canal. Um, if, if I want to paint from the middle of the canal upward so I see some of the sky, if you press the option and the alt key or option or alt key uh, with the clone stamp tool selected, you can set a target and now when I paint, I'm going to paint from there upward. And so we can go to our next document and even if I want this uh, C to be in this corner, I can start painting over here until I get the part that I want. And then once I paint it in, I can move it back and forth or around the image until I get the part that I want to keep. And so I'll just kind of go like this until we get all of the image that we want to keep. Maybe that's the part we want to keep. And now, because it's on its own layer, we'll call this canal. We can then drag it and drop it and kind of see where it works best with the rest of our image. Maybe it works really well down in the bottom or maybe it works well over here. We'll just kind of leave it there for now. I'll be done with that image. And so I'm going to repeat that over and over again for the next five images. And so if you kind of get this concept, you can skip ahead. But I'm just going to keep repeating myself until I have all of the images copied. And so we'll set a target by selecting the clone stamp tool. Use the option or the alt key to change your cursor to crosshairs and then click. Maybe somewhere in the middle since this is kind of a pattern. And then when we come back to our actual document, we can paint in like a paintbrush until, whoops, see how I went too far there? We can undo that until you get the part of the image that you want that works for your design. Maybe it's kind of long and skinny like this. And then you can drag it and drop it in place. Now I broke my own rule and so I did not make a layer for this and so if I turn off my other layers you can see that the canal layer has the bricks and uh, the stones and the canal. That's an easy fix. You can use your lasso tool and make a giant selection around more than you think you need of those stones. You can command uh, X to cut it, create a new layer and label it stones, and then command V to paste it. And now we can drag it, whoops, make sure you switch to your move tool. We can drag it and drop it in place. Maybe you want to use this multiple times in your collage. Uh, one of my favorite key commands is the option key and if you push the option key your cursor will change to a black and a white mouse. When that happens you can click and drag and you can make a copy and then you can move that copy around. You could choose edit, uh, transform and you could flip it horizontally and uh, maybe we'll also do edit, transform, flip vertically. And so now it kind of looks like maybe they're different stones but they're just the same ones in different perspective. We can close out of the stones image, just keep chugging along. And so we will select the clone stamp tool, 
set a target by pushing the option to the Alt key. We'll do kind of right in the middle, I think. And then we can start painting. Whoops, make sure you make a new layer for that. We'll call this vines. Whoops, I went too far over. It's the benefit of painting slowly. So this one, I think I'm gonna leave the hard edge and I'll show you in a second why. I don't want a hard edge on the left hand side though. Okay, so now that I have that, maybe this is gonna go at the top of the screen here and so it's okay that it falls off the side. And uh, maybe I put the stones in front and so now they're blending that way. Okay, maybe I'm gonna even move that up higher so that it fills in that gap up there. We will, maybe I want to copy this twice. So I just copied it and I took the bottom part, but maybe I want to use the, I mean, sorry, the top part, but maybe I want to use the bottom part now. And so I could select my clone stamp tool and I could set a new target, maybe right at the bottom there. And now on a new layer, I'm going to name it veggies for the vegetation. Now you can kind of copy that area. And then once you have it, you can kind of tuck it in somewhere. You can reposition your layers so that um, they are in the order that gives you the result that you're looking for for your collage. I don't know if I chose enough images for this. So we'll select another target for the image with the purple flowers. So select your clone stamp tool. Press and hold the Alt or the Option key. Click to set a target. And then come over here and start painting. I'm going to try to do a lot for this one. See, I've got the corner here. I don't want the corner, and so that's why it's better to paint smaller. But I do, I do want a lot of the image. So once I realize I'm at the top, now I can just kind of come this direction to get a lot of the image. And maybe this is going to go in the bottom left-hand corner. And so I can go all the way down if I want to because I'm going to push it off the page. like such. Okay, now we can drag and drop that, but again, I, I broke my own rule. And so if I turn off these other layers, you'll see that the, the flowers are not on its own layer. And so we'll just cut it, Command X, create a new layer, and paste it. We can call that one purple flowers. We'll drag it and drop it into this corner turn the rest of the layers back on, and then just keep chugging along until you fill up your whole collage. So clone stamp tool, option, I'm just gonna do it right in the middle of the screen to set your target, and now we can come work on painting some windmills in. It's kinda cool about the windmill image is maybe you clone the top part up here, but you leave out the middle, and then you clone the other windmill on the other side. Then you could put something else in between or we can just paint across. Like such. Um, again, I, I didn't put it on its own layer but it's okay. It's on the purple flowers layer so we'll just leave it. This one, uh, we can set a target. Uh, clone stamp tool, option or alt key, set the target. I'm going to try to copy the fence and not the background and so I'm going to set the target somewhere inside the fence and I'm going to remember to make a new layer for the fence and this time maybe I'm going to put it right here and so I can start painting that area. Now my layer, can you see my layers down below? You may want to put your layer at the top just so you can see exactly what you're copying you don't have to copy everything. You don't even have to worry if you can see it or not. Um, but you do want to be able to see what you have in case you need it. And so you can always reposition your layer after you're done. And so I can move it here if I need to. And then I could reposition my layers. Maybe I move it beneath a bunch of layers to see what it would look like. I definitely think that the stone should be behind the fence. So maybe I move the fence over and you're just going to keep creating a collage 
and I think that looks good. Okay, just a couple more to go. So clone stamp tool, option or alt key. I'm gonna copy the boat this time, so I'll just click somewhere in the middle of the boat. And then let's put the boat, let's say right here. And so create a boat layer. And start painting the boat. Um, once you start to get a lot of images into your collage, it's kind of hard to see what you're doing, so you may want to just turn the other layers off while you're making the copy. And then now all you have to worry about is that boat, and then when you turn it back on, that's when you can kind of worry about uh, where it's going to be positioned with other things. You can always go back and erase some of the stuff that you copied, uh, but it's kind of hard to go back um, and add more if you miss something when you're stamping and then you reset your target. It's, it's nearly impossible. Okay, so now we have our boat that we've copied. We can turn all the layers back on and we can decide where the boat should actually end up. So maybe the boat comes down here and ends up in the middle like such. I'm going to move my little bricks up higher because I think that they'll blend in better. And then I just need to find, figure out the bottom. So I actually, after all, I might have enough images. I just have two images of flowers left, and so we will select the clone stamp tool, hit the option of the alt key, click to set a target, and now you can come kind of copy in your flowers until the flowers look like what you want. I forgot to make a new layer again, so we could undo this. Command Z to undo, step backwards, and we can create a new layer for pink flowers. Now on that layer, we can start pasting in. You can see that it kind of blends pretty well with the background. Whoops, I went too far. You can kind of just copy it in. And then I know I'm getting close to the edge there. And so I'm just gonna leave it. And I have one more image. And so we'll close out of this guy. And we'll use these flowers to fill in the gap. And so we'll use the clone stamp tool. We'll use the option key to click. I think I want to click about here and then create another new layer called Pink Flowers 2. And now when you start painting in, you can just worry about it blending. Now I've gone too far over and that means I'm going to have a gap over here, but it doesn't mean I'm going to have a gap. It means that if I try to keep painting to the left, I'm going to have a gap, but maybe I come over further and then I move whatever I've created over into that area. If I do that, it means that I have to paint again, but it doesn't mean that I have to get a new image out. I could go back to this original image and I could say, well, let's start cloning, use the clone stamp tool. Let's start cloning from here and make it look like there's lots of flowers that overlap. Whoops, make sure you don't go too far. There we go. And so now I have my collage, I have my image. I would say that it maybe isn't the best collage and there's some things that are gonna bother me. For example, the light, um, the windmills. I don't think you can see the windmills very well. But what you could do is you could come back to the layer that's blocking them, which is our boat here. And on the boat layer, maybe you grab the eraser tool with a feathered edge and a lowered opacity and you kind of just kind of click until you're so I'm erasing on the boat layer. Whoops, where'd the boat go? I'm erasing things on the boat layer so that you can see through. Um, but because I have the collage turned on, as I create a hole, an actual hole, not a mask kind of hole, as I'm painting a hole onto the boat layer, you can start to see through. And so can you see when I paint on the left-hand side here for the windmill, it's blocked by the fence. If I go to the fence layer, and I start to paint, then you'd see a hole form for it there. But now if I paint over here, nothing happens because I'm not on the boat layer anymore. And so if I look at this other windmill, the bricks layer, you can turn layers on and off to make sure that you found it. So it's a stone layer. If I paint or I erase on the stone layer, you can kind of start to make the windmill show up a little bit more. You can kind of help it fade into the next image. And so that is one way to kind of fix those types of errors. To wrap up this collage postcard, um, you'd probably, if it was a travel postcard, you would want to add some text. It's not something we've talked about uh, so far, but I think it's something that most people will kind of 
connect that if you use the T it's the text tool and if you click after you have selected the type tool you can type and so maybe um, this is my trip to Amsterdam so I can type Amsterdam if you highlight it you can change the text just like you would like in Microsoft Word or in the internet um, if you use the top of your screen up here uh, if you work across you can change the typeface so you can find a typeface that might work better for what you want to do maybe it's this guy here I don't know I don't actually like it so I'll go with something else let's go with this one this is always my go-to one that I like um, it's really small so maybe I want to make it bigger and so I'll keep making it bigger until it fits the, the design better you can see that it has a color the color came from your tools panel and so the foreground color represented the color of the text and so if you use your type tool and you click on your text and you highlight it you could double click on your foreground color and you can change the color of your text until it's something that works for you. Now this is where I'm going to kind of add something different which we're going to use in our next video and those are layer effects and so if you cannot find a color that stands out on your background because there's so many different colors there's not one color that's going to work for this and so if you find a color that you really like and you want to have I don't know that color blue as your text you can't always read it depending on where you put it in your design so if I put it on the bricks you can see the A very well but maybe you can't read the um, ERD as part of Amsterdam uh, one thing you can do is you can create kind of contrast in your image by applying layer effects and layer effects can apply to a layer to a shape or even text here and if you select the layer on your layers panel and you use the FX button at the bottom you can you know add some effects and one of the things I like to do is maybe an outer glow which puts can you kind of see a little bit of a haze around the outside and the default is a screening blending mode and we know what blending modes are right they affect how your artwork blends with whatever is beneath it and so what I'd recommend is changing it to normal and then making the opacity a hundred percent and then after you kind of start tweaking it if you want to go back then you can lower the opacity and things like that I'm going to change the size and make it bigger and maybe the spread and make that bigger too and so now if I select OK you can kind of read Amsterdam better than you could before uh, what's cool about this is that these effects stay with the shape if you change it or the text and so if we highlight the text and we make the typeface 100 points big you can see that it still has those effects applied to it and so you could make a collage or a postcard that says Amsterdam there's lots of other effects too so you don't have to use just this one if we go back you could apply a bevel and emboss and sometimes that makes your text stand out um, I don't think I like it for this example I think just by putting that white behind the, it doesn't even have to be white either and so after you add it if you don't like it let's say that you kinda like it but you don't like the color you can just double click it on your layer you can see that you have applied effect and it's an outer glow and you can change the color so right here it's white you can make it red if you want to probably not a good option but you could um, maybe you want to go back to your blue color but you want to make it like a light blue and so maybe it kind of works harmoniously it's in balance with the color and so now instead of being distracting it kind of looks as part of of the typeface or the design of the typeface okay that wraps up this video um, before you move forward I want to make sure that you're comfortable with making it so that you can combine elements of different documents into one whether that's copying and pasting um, or it's using this clone stamp tool and also make sure that you understand the importance of being able to have a feathered edge because sometimes you want to have a feathered edge sometimes you don't but sometimes you do and when you do you should know at least one or two different ways to be able to do that at this point in time